If you had asked me four years ago of how it was going to end for me up to this point, I would have given a different answer each year. After years of being involved in what you might call more outlandish or despicable endeavors, my world would ultimately come crashing down. I was always good at hiding in plain sight. People saw me as just another face in the crowd. Someone unremarkable, forgettable, and in my case that wasn't so bad. For years I've roamed the streets as a shadowy figure, driven by an insatiable urge to cut, slice, carve, just to feel that warm rush of blood against my skin. Such marvelous moments. I've been deemed many names throughout my time. Monster, demon, heinous individual, even the devil himself. But the name given to me by my parents is Henry Zass. I am what today would call a serial killer. But the reality is I was a savior. This is my story. My obsession with flesh began innocently enough in my youth that grew into an all-consuming passion. Each cut was a masterpiece, a work of art in my twisted mind. Each victim a canvas on which I painted my darkest desires walking souls in dire need of liberation. The first time I felt the blade of cold steel piercing warm flesh, I knew I was addicted. The sensation was intoxicating, a mixture of pleasure and power that fueled my every action. As I was walking from the casino after losing almost everything, I was lost and thrown out into the city like trash in the wind. Can you imagine what that was like? I was numb and I had lost everything, and I was alone, just staggering through the streets, until I found the answer that I had been longing for. I stood on an old bridge overseeing the Atlantic Sea. I felt a warm breeze on my skin, and it felt foreboding then, as I reveled in the cool night breeze. Then he appeared. He held a knife in his hand lashing out as if he wanted to cut me, as he demanded money. MY MONEY! The audacity of this imbecile. Not sure how to act next, I looked into his fixed eyes, and I saw something familiar, something inevitable. I saw oblivion. I saw the madness of a miserable being in desperate need of salvation. So. I gave it to him. If only you could have seen the vagrant look upon his face as I removed the blade from his grasp and buried it into his neck. It was instinctive. It was beautiful. I carved out his vocal cords and gave him the gift of salvation. Such a joyous sensation as the blood jetted in spurts across my face. I saw when a little life was left in his eyes. Leave. But then it was over. I felt empty. Lost. If you would, I could have been meaningless. Like none would acknowledge the incredibility of my work. And then it hit me. Without realizing what I was doing, I plunged the knife into my forearm and cut profoundly. Was incredible. My body elevated into a higher means of existence. It had become a temple of my work. Work that was necessary. But I longed to continue. Yeah, the butcher was born. I became meticulous in my preparations, selecting them like a predator before finally pouncing. The media dubbed me The Butcher, a fitting name for someone who reveled in the act of dissection. One night, as I was walking in the cold, foggy night air of Manhattan, New York, I walked by a busy bar, everyone dancing, singing, throwing back shots of alcohol, a 
as a means to escape the sickness of reality, not knowing that I am able to offer them the ultimate cure. As I travel on, I notice two little piggies who've wandered outside, seemingly locked out of the bar, heavily intoxicated, and just waiting for me to cure them of life. I go to them. I give them comfort and offer them a ride home. They accept. On the way, I offer them a last beverage as a parting gift. Little do they know it will be their last. I make a few wrong turns, stalling to give the horse tranquilizer time to kick in. And as it does, they're out. I turn around and take them to my hideout. A couple of hours later, my little piggies awaken hog-tied with no memory towards their prior events which led them to this moment. I tell them not to worry. It's all okay. There's no need to worry about anything anymore. You're free now. And I begin cutting, 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 and cutting until it's done. Their meaningless lives have come to an end. And I get to savor it. And I get to add two more marks to my flesh. I left a trail of bodies in my wake. Each one a testament to my skills and madness. I found myself depending on the mark. I had to make the mark. The police were always two steps behind me constantly trying to piece together the fragments of evidence I left behind. They'll only find what I want. That was until this one detective arrived. Detective Clayton is what they called him. Supposedly he was one of their best, and a thorn in my side. As I continue my work, months go down the road. A few of my secured warehouses are raided, releasing ones whom I've captured, but haven't yet relieved them of their torturous state of being they call life. This insignificant speck of feculent scum was interfering with my work. He's getting in the way of me and the mark, and I must make the mark. So I decided to save a special place for him. I'll place a special mark on my skin exclusively for him. I start leaving warnings at each crime scene for notes written in blood. Signed, The Butcher. As time went on, we became closer. So I decided to toy with him. No more messages. It's time we chat. Who is this? Hello, detective. Do you remember me? Butcher. Good, you do remember me. Because I'll never forget you. And that's why I have a special game for you. Look here, I'm not gonna play any of your pathetic games. Do us both a favor and turn yourself in. Save me the trouble and a lot of paperwork. Oh, so little patience, detective. But that's not a bad thing, because that will help you in this game. I believe you've heard I've been providing salvation to many people lucky enough to choose to answer my calls. Salvation? You'll be killing them, you sick SOB. That depends on how you look at it. Right now, there's two little piggies standing not far from a phone that are just waiting for me to cure them of life. But I doubt they would see it that way. Unless you can get to the phone in time, detective. If you are the butcher, I will personally hunt you down. I don't doubt that, detective. Remember this. There's an abandoned liquor store somewhere around here, and in order to find You'll need to know the 23rd president. I've already told you I wasn't going to play any of your games. Oh, but you will. These piggies' lives depend on it. And my flesh is begging you to fail. Now hang up that phone and start running. I wait, 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 until the waiting stops. The detective doesn't make it to the phone in time. And as for the little piggies, they found themselves at the slaughterhouse, and to teach the detective once more, I leave behind the piggies' ears. 
said a message on the wall written in pig blood. <laughs> Months go by and so do the bodies, and my bodies become riddled with the marks. The detective isn't letting up. I begin to see flyers going up around this city. The police are getting desperate, trying to make it harder for them to find my mark. But it's a big place, and no one cares. <laughs> decided to teach the detective again for his many failed attempts to bring my actions to a halt. Clayton here. Hello, detective. It's been a while. I noticed you've been searching for me pretty relentlessly now. Listen here, you bastard. I'm going to find you, and when I do, I'll strap you to the electric chair myself. You'll be lucky if you even make it that far. Detective, you sound so passionate. Since we're being honest with each other, I'm going to gut you like a fish. But until then, there's a ringing phone, and you have 13 minutes to find it. The location is in Harlem, near the alley where you meddled in someone's business for the third time. There's a little piggy there who's depending on you. Run, Detective. Run. Fifteen minutes later, another mark award. <laughs> Two years have gone by now since this game of cat and mouse has begun, and the detective and I have grown closer, it seems. Almost as if we were friends here. <laughs> I leave my friend a few more messages, and a call or two here and there, but now they're truly relentless. I will admit by now, they've gotten smarter over the years. Or maybe I've gotten sloppy. Either way, the detective is tracking me down even harder. More of my safe houses are being discovered. Evidence is stacking up. I even nearly got caught a few times. The last encounter just barely making it out. So I had no choice but to change my tactics. My new friend is becoming a nuisance. He's interfering with my plans to obtain the newest mark. And no one gets between me and the mark. So now I must get rid of him. For months now, I've been leaving more bodies for my friend. But this time, I do something different. Just like they look for me to slip up in some way. I decide to take their method and use it for myself. I head to a few crime scenes and find anything available to aid me in finding my friend. After performing enough of my own investigations, it's time to set my plan into motion. And it begins with a call. Detective Clayton. Hello, my friend. You know, if you wanted to see me so bad, all you had to do was call. The only place I want to see you is behind bars, or in a coffin. Either works for me. I'm gonna warn you again. Put an end to this butcher while you still can, or I'll forget about doing things by the book. Well, perhaps I'll stop now. Find another telephone, detective. Your personal piggies depend on it. Talking about. God! God, you son of a bitch! I swear to Christ, if you lay one finger on them! Now, now, my friend, you're in no position to be making threats. My boys, don't you touch them! As long as you find the phone in time, they'll be fine. I'm counting on you to find my work, detective. Go to the old bridge over the Atlantic Sea where it all began. You'll find my work along with your piggies. You have 12 minutes before the phone rings. Take too long and you'll only find their remains. Run, detective. Run. 10 minutes, 33 seconds later. Hello, detective. Or may I call you Benny? What is this? Where are my boys? You follow the rules, my friend. You've made it to the phone in time. They're fine. But then, this was never about them. It was you. It's always been you. Bring that 
excited. You spent years chasing me. And now you have me. Here we are. Only not quite as you hoped. You listen to me, Butcher. Whoever you are. I'm a cop. You think my disappearance will go unnoticed? Are you aware of how much trouble comes with this? It's a shame we become so close and yet we barely know each other. I know you, but you not me. So I'll tell you. My name is Henry Sims. I grew up mostly in Harlem, but I bounced around to Manhattan and Queens. Oh my god. And Nicholas Zaz's son. Damn it, it all makes sense now. 23rd President, Benjamin Harris liquor store is where I first arrested him for robbery. And the second time for public intoxication. And the laundromat I arrested him a third time for assault and mugging. Yes, you were a problem in the family way before you became mine. Shit, Sass. Your father was a problem. A danger to himself. Look, Sass, it's not too late to save yourself. Just let me go. You'll feel the full force of the NYPD. And they'll send many other officers in my wake to hunt you down. You won't win! And I'll send them all back in pieces. Every single one. Starting with you. Wait a minute. You give your victims choices, right? To answer the phone or not, you give them a way to survive. Well, what about me? Where's my choice? Oh, but you have a choice, Detective. Scream or don't. Follow for more spine tingling content. Drop a like to show your fear loving spirit and share the frights with friends. <laughs>